So we're here um, at West Mossside Organic Farm. My name's Kate Sankey. Um, and I've been here almost, oh, well, well over 30 years now. And the farm is a small farm, 160 odd acres on the Castle of Stirling. Uh, the land includes both uh, hay ground, uh, gr grass growing ground, and part of Flanders Moss National Nature Reserve, which is the largest raised bog in the whole of the British Isles, so it's quite important for peat. Um, uh, the, the enterprises are, are hay and uh, working with Nature Scott on the National Nature Reserve uh, with conservation grazing. So I have rare breed Shetland cattle, chosen because they're small, hardy, easy calving, well behaved, um, and they do well on poor ground. My diversification journey, if you like, has, uh, has been a slow one and has evolved uh, as my time here has, has moved on, um, starting, starting actually with uh, uh, growing willow on the riverbank as a conservation project for, for um, tall vegetation on the, on the, on the river. Uh, I then learned how to make baskets, having planted all these willow rods. Um, and then having learned how to make baskets, I then decided I needed a workshop. And maybe I could even run some workshops myself and invite tutors to come uh, to run workshops, not just in, on, in willow weaving, but in rush and felt and textiles and other, other traditional and contemporary crafts. So I've been here uh, 30 odd years now um, and I didn't come from a farming background but what I was really interested in was how you could farm and this is 30 years ago so it was kind of you know, ahead of the curve perhaps how you could farm with nature um, and sustainability as a sort of key, key uh, philosophy for the place. The farming enterprise is hay uh, to, to begin with, it was a big learning curve um, and I was kind of following the ground as to what, it, what, it, uh, you know, what was the best thing to do. Having got the cattle um, and having started the haymaking regime, um, it was really a question of how it would work as a business. I soon realised that all the things I wanted to do, I wanted to be generated by the farm itself. One of the things I did early on, there's a, there's a river that runs through the, 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 the farm um, and it had been highly engineered. So one of the first things I did for conservation was planted up with riverside vegetation. Um, and I decided to plant willow and I thought if I'm going to plant willow, I'll perhaps plant willow that I can make baskets out of. So I researched all the different varieties of willow and uh, talked to the Scottish basket makers circle about what willow was, was the basket makers like. And well, it, it, it dictated itself because there's a willow known as Flanders Red. So that's what it was going to be. Nothing to do with Flanders Moss National Nature Reserve. But, um, so I planted the, up the, the, the riverside with willow and I thought, actually, I now need to know how to make a basket because I planted a thousand um, cuttings um, and was looking forward to, in two years' time, having a crop, if you like, of willow rods for, for weaving. So off I took myself to a, a willow basket making weekend and got hooked. So that was actually the start, but interesting, the start was the willow that I planted on the farm. So that was my first diversification, was uh, workshops which moved from just being uh, basket making into felting, uh, bee skep, uh, rush, all sorts of other uh, sort of traditional but moving into contemporary interpretations of traditional, um, uh, traditional skills and crafts. We're now in the, what's called the West Moss Side Centre. Um, this, where I'm actually standing, was an old shed, cattle shed, that had a tractor in it. 
um, and uh, it's been transformed into what is a, a venue, I suppose you'd call it, a space. Um, upstairs is a hayloft, um, and this is uh, the, the sort of conference area, and it gets used for a number of things. It was an old steading, um, same age as the, as the rest of the farm, um, and it was just looking a bit sad um, and looking like it needed needed a new a new life, um, and it coincided with the idea of setting up a, a workshop space and a, a space for events. So, and it, you know, small as it is, it works really well. And people say that I've created an environment that is very, which is a creative and inspiring place. But once a year, we have, uh, we, we contribute to something called the Forth Valley Art Beat, which is an open studios event all over Forth Valley, where artists open their studios to the public. And we have here um, a group of about 10 people now. We call ourselves the West Moss Side Collective, and that includes myself as a basket maker, my partner, Graham, who is the painter, landscape painter, um, and photographers, and um, uh, jewelers, and a whole group of us, of uh, different artists that come together to put together an exhibition. Um, and it's, it's held mid-June. To begin with, um, I ran workshops and I invited tutors to come and run the workshops and I joined in um, so I learnt as well. Um, and at each stage I met somebody else who introduced me to somebody else. So the, the group of tutors um, you know, in, in, increased you know, year on year. So at the end, um, you know, pre-Covid, there must have been about um, 10 or 12 different workshops that I ran with different leaders and tutors. So this is the hayloft, um, and that's exactly what it was. Um, and it, uh, it went the whole length of the building with a little trap door and a, and a ladder to get up into it. Um, so it was, uh, and it was in poor, well, it was just the hayloft. Um, so that's been turned into a space that can be used for all sorts. Um, originally, I envisaged it to be a place for running workshops, uh, workshops in, in crafts or workshops for groups that wanted to have an away day um, or a place for a meeting um, and it's it's been used for all of those things including a lot of other things that people have come and said gosh um, can I run a yoga class here for example can I do a meditation session here um, can I uh, get married here so it it has it, it has been used for all sorts of things and it's also become a bit of a kind of focus in the community so um, it uh, is where we have meetings of the class of sterling partnership which is a landowner recreation group um, for the class of sterling um, and and also there's a local village band that comes and practices once a, once a week but it's a place it's very much if you can if you want to use it it's here to be used this is the kitchen um, that uh, was added to the the center at the same time as the yurts went up. Um, and the idea was obviously to be able to cater for events in the, in the, in the centre, um, but also to create a catering kitchen that could be used by somebody who was running a business and wanted to come and do some processing. Um, so it's a space again that is available to use and it's been used for a number of different events, foraging courses um, and, and various cook, cook school type um, events. 
but it, um, and the idea was that it was again an, an available space. I created a space that could be used by, by, the, by others and I actually gave it a kind of notional name called Fertile Ground and that's almost what I feel that the whole of West Moss Side is. There's all sorts of ideas that can come into the place. I think the most important thing I would suggest to anybody is take a good think about what, where your skills are and where those skills obviously link with your farm and your farm enterprise. The starting point was starting with my strengths and sure enough you're going to need lots of new skills which none of, many of which I didn't have particularly in actually running a business and planning a project and project managing some building but all of those things followed from the, the central point of, of what I was I knew I wanted to do and knew I could do um, and I think the other thing that I found really helpful was talking to other people on that same journey people who were further down the down the journey with you know you could see how they'd how they got to where they'd got stick with what you're good at and take all the advice that's out there uh, not you know, not to mention, importantly, the Farm Advisory Service with uh, a variety of, of, of offerings there as well. My name is Andrew Donaldson and uh, I'm here effectively because I'm just really passionate about the outdoors and nature. And I love um, helping people to, uh, you know, to connect with that. You know, I think we we are part of nature. We're not. We shouldn't be separate. We do separate ourselves sometimes, and uh, it's really good to to do a job where I can help people to um, to connect with all the, the nature around about us. So, uh, Comrie Croft is uh, is a farm um, set in Perthshire between Creef and Comrie. Uh, bottom of Ben Honzi, um, uh, so there's a, there's a big mountain kind of hiding up behind us um, and uh, it was really actively farmed up until the mid 90s and at that point the farm wasn't really viable uh, you know, for one household anymore. I started a company with my brother and we, we leased the, the farm from the, from the owner and then bought it uh, with a, through a kind of crowd funder in 2008 and that was really where we got the chance to kind of uh, decide what we're going to do with this place. What's our what's our vision? And really, that was uh, all centred on, on regeneration. You know, at this farm, which wasn't able, you know, with this with the scale of it, it wasn't able to support a, a kind of traditional farming living for one household anymore. Um, what what was possible? Um, maybe doing things slightly differently. We looked at the the place. We we, we did a lot of business planning initially. And, um, and and basically decided to, to try and start a few different enterprises um, on the farm uh, that, that uh, complement each other and that, that, that would work together. Um, and oh, I mean, those are, now there's 10 enterprises, uh, and if I can remember them all, um, that includes uh, camping and, and a, a type of glamping, um, which is like, Posh set up camping. Um, we've got accommodation still um, uh, in the, the hostel. Uh, we, we've got a wedding venue in the old barn. Um, we uh, what else do we do? We've got a bike business. So there's a bike shop that does repairs and guiding and uh, and public uh, free to use bike trails. Um, and the, there's a, some businesses which we've invited in as well to 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 start that we don't run directly uh, so that's a, a market includes a market garden uh, a cafe uh, and the newest one actually a, a forest school so like a, a for uh, young kids how we started um, and, and how we kind of decided what we were doing it, it was a kind of process um, a bit of an organic process I would say but we did we d it was very intentional you know it wasn't we just kind of plowed on with the first thing that came to mind um, we did you know, we had some beers and glasses of wine and we had a small team, so we included them and we, we, we spent a few evenings, uh, I guess you could call it brainstorming, but actually writing things down in cards and sticking it up and trying to uh, sort things out and work out, you know, what, what works with what and what doesn't really fit so well. Um, 
and you know, and some of those were well things that we could do now, and some of the things that maybe we could do later. We're not sure. Um, so it was a kind of yeah, slightly evolving but planning process, uh, and and I think to be honest, writing it down is the key part of that. You know, the actual making it a business plan in black and white. I'd say it was really important. Uh, it wasn't all just kind of floating around and n not defined. It, it was, you know, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and actually, remarkably, you know, 10 years later, looking back at it, um, we were, it, it was amazing how much we'd actually stuck to that um, without referring to it every, uh, every month. Uh, so, yeah, that was the, that was the process. In order to get some of these activities and, and things started, um, part of that process was was about finding the right people or the right people finding us. Sometimes, you know, so sometimes we've been approached by by folk who have an idea, want to start a business, um, or, or or run a business, and um, and they've come to us with their idea, and we've we've thought about it, and some we've gone with, and some we haven't. Um, so that was that was how, the, for instance, the the, the biking. Uh, the bike shop and the, the bike trails here started. Um, so that you know, somebody with bike shop experience came to us with a with a, an idea um, to, and I guess it, it also worked well with our with the type of land that we've got. You know, we've got a lot of uh, woodland and rough hill ground, bracken. Uh, you know, not prime agricultural ground. Um, which, well, okay, so we can't grow fantastic crops in here, but what can we do with it? Um, and and that's where mountain biking, uh, you know, became uh, a, a good fit, um, uh, both from that per that point of view of the fit of our land and the fit of the the person, you know, having somebody to drive it forward. The way we've we've done a lot of the activities here has been kind of dip a toe in the water to begin with, um, so. With the with the biking enterprise, yeah, we we set up a few informal trails and we had a few quite old hire bikes to begin with, and and we had this chap who was who was into biking, but he also did maintenance. So so to begin with, it wasn't a full time job, and and that gives a gives a chance to you know test the water, and um, uh, and and build it you know. Uh, slowly, if you like, yeah. So another example of the of the kind of dip a toe in the water uh, strategy, if you like, is um, with our cafe. Uh, so we thought there's probably a market. You know, we've got a, a, a good footfall here. Um, people are asking um, for cups of tea and, and and so on. And but how do we do that without you know putting hundreds of thousands of pounds in all at once to something and we, we don't really know how it's going to work. So actually, we started with a a shed, a B and Q garden shed, and a vending machine, um, and and that grew into a, um, well that, that 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 you know proved that there was demand for something, and um, and that moved on to the next step of uh, a porta cabin, slight you know beautified um, as much as we could, uh, but uh, but still very simple and not massive investment, and you know and so it's been kind of incremental. And that that's definitely our approach. So one one other point about collaborating is, um, or bringing in people to run other businesses on our farm, is that you know some of the businesses are are I would call a labour love. Um, you know the market garden is uh, it's not a, it's very difficult to make a lot of cash from selling vegetables and fruit um, or even flowers, um, and so you know those are. Are driven. Those th that kind of business is driven by passionate people, and we want that to be part of the crop because we think it's a really important part of our local economy to, to be growing food here. Uh, but it's not something that can sustain, um, you know, a, a management overhead. So hence, bring in some other people who, you know, who want to do that kind of thing. In terms of lessons learned, I mean. Uh, We've we've made a few mistakes, so um, it, it's not it's certainly not that we we are experts in in, in this kind of thing, but uh, in making mistakes, obviously you do you do learn something, and and we you know we tried to start a wildlife viewing enterprise, and the wildlife didn't uh, want to be viewed, <laughs> so 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 it doesn't always work out. Um, I think 
the lesson I would say is, you know, if you, if you want to diversify, try things, you know, and and um, it is great to, to, to just give things a go, especially if you can do it without paying huge amounts of money, you know, investing too much uh, to begin with. See that the, the market exists um, and what the market exactly uh, wants and how that fits with your farm. And uh, and then take it from there. And the other thing which I, which I mentioned earlier is is you know write down a plan, uh, you know set objectives and work out the, the path to get there, um, so that you know you're you're clear of what you're trying to do. Here at Comrie Croft, uh, we are at the campsite, um, part of it, and uh, this is where we've used some of the, the not so productive ground uh, to provide uh, space for, for people to just tent camping. We don't have caravans or anything like that, and people can have a campfire, and we provide some basic facilities with, uh, with toilets and, and showers. We encourage people just to get outside and, and enjoy you know, their surroundings. Um, so walking is, is, is a big one, uh, but one of the other um, kind of paid activities is, is mountain biking. Uh, so we hire bikes to people, we've built some trails especially for, for mountain biking and, uh, and we've built some services on the back of that. So we, we, we do bike repairs and, and guiding and, and other, other bike related things as well. We fit in, in various different ways, partly it's just uh, providing an attraction to, you know, to create a market. So by getting people up here to, to, to go biking, even if they use the trails uh, for free, then maybe they spend money in the cafe or maybe they stay over. Um, so so that's, that's a big part of the, the collaboration is, is kind of a shared customer base. We sell bikes, so there's a lot of uh, big cardboard bike boxes that come out of the, the bike shop and rather than having to send them off to a recycling centre, we use them as a mulch uh, for under fruit bushes in the market garden. From a farming point of view, uh, camping is quite a nice diversification activity, partly because it's seasonal, so it doesn't take up time and energy all year round. It, it, it's a, it's kind of uh, it's a good summer thing uh, to 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 make some some cash essentially, um, and it's very simple to set up. You know, at, at its most basic level, it's just space for tent and and toilet facilities uh, that are required. So. Um, we really like camping and, uh, and people seem to really like camping on, on our farm.